All right, making a video, draft science video. <laughs> it's anyway, somebody mentioned this in the comment section, so I thought I would do something about it. It's a Miles Mathis theory that pi equals 4. And this guy's done an experiment to illustrate the truth. Ugh. <laughs> and it's just so bad. Um, so the idea is here's there's two tubes. Balls will be run down the two tubes. So this one has the length of or what's going to be called a pi, and then this one is allowed to be longer to the end. And if it, the two balls go down here, this one pops out, and the other one doesn't pop out, um, goes all the way to the four instead of pi. So if pi was here, it goes to the four in the same amount of time. You know, I mean, there's lots of obvious stuff, but I'll, I'll, I think I'll add some value <laughs> okay, to this explanation. I mean, the most obvious thing would be is you could just recognize that this tube has a lot less friction because there will be no centrifugal forces that will be pushing the ball into the surface and creating more friction. Obviously, friction is friction. You can't say more friction makes the ball go faster. That would be retarded. <laughs> now, the appearance of speed is a different thing than the actual speed. And clearly, friction is friction. You, can't get, you just can't get around it. Friction is friction. It's always negative. It's not positive. You don't have positive friction. You just don't. So, yes, this ball from here to here goes slower. And then if this tube continued, then the ball would regain its regular speed when it was out of the friction. <laughs> you know, but it's not going to do it while it's in the circle, while it's tethered let's call it. Um, so what I would add to this though is that the mechanism is kind of like you can think of gravity. Now if this was a, a gravitational orbit you can understand that there's a force of gravity I would say pushing force <laughs> and it's the pushing force that's combining with the the velocity that wants to go one way and there's a velocity being added in another direction. So it's a combination of velocities that turn. So it's uh, a non, not a frictional um, component. It's an acceleration. That's what we call it, accelerating towards Earth. You don't, even though, in the same sense, it's, it's a confinement. It's a confinement with an acceleration because the force is being added to create the new vector. In this case, <coughs> there is no force pushing it in. So there's no adding to the velocity of the ball. There's actually the exact opposite has to happen. The momentum of the ball is the only momentum in the equation. This is, a, this is dead. There, this has no energy. So unlike gravity, gravity has energy. Gravity accelerates things. In this circumstance, there's no source of energy. The ball is the only source. Gravity can't provide energy. So there can be no addition to the velocity. It has to be a subtraction. So obviously, whatever motion it makes off its trajectory, so off its straight line trajectory, it can't be an additive motion. It can't be an acceleration. It has to be a deceleration. So. Um, the change is happening by taking away speed from the ball. The ball has the, well, again, just think about it. There's no, if I was to take everything out of here, you could look at that loop and you say there's no energy in the loop. The loop can't apply energy to the ball. It can only take it away. And, and so this has to slow it down um, because of the, the, change the change in its vector so even if you take even if you take friction out of the equation you'd still have the same problem so i don't have to use friction as an explanation what i'm stating is the explanation lies in the fact that the momentum of the ball is going to be changed and any change in its momentum if it's not an active force applying the change and instead it's matter a, a container a string, a spoke on a wheel, if I swing something around on a string, whatever the mechanism 
that I'm forcing a change in momentum with, if I'm using matter to do it, I'm not giving the thing extra momentum. I'm forcing it to degrade its speed, to change its speed. So by my theory, as I've explained, it's the dancing argument, almost like time dilation. <clears throat> if you're going to change the vector or the pointing vector of the momentum, you're going to have to do it by applying force. And the only place to get the force is from the actual momentum of the thing itself. So you have to take away the, the a component of its vertical speed, let's call it, its straight line speed. You have to take a component of that and apply it to the new direction. So you have to reduce it to turn it. And it's not a it's not force plus force. It's force <laughs> it's force being used against the same you have to subtract from the force to apply the other the y vector so you have an x vector accel uh, velocity and to change it you have to take away some x vector to apply it to a y coordinate to cause the new direction so in that sense you have to take from its momentum but the momentum will be restored once it's free or liberated from the circumstance um, obliging it to continually change its velocity vector. So once it no longer has to keep changing its velocity vector, it'll go back to its normal speed. So in a sense, there is friction in this experiment that's probably doing some of the, you know, it's causing some effect. But the real effect is just the fact that you're changing its direction. And it's the change in direction in real space. So just imagine the tube didn't exist. And the ball was going to just do this for the fact that you, you know. Again, you can't have a, a hard force. But just, just the idea that you're, there was some reason it was going to do this. You could just understand that for it to turn, there has to be the application of force. And there's nothing here to apply an active force. So the only place to get the active force, to get the energy, is from the momentum of the ball that's moving. So the ball has to move slower. And it's just obvious. That's exactly what happens. So in the experiment, this ball pops out. At the same time, this ball pops out at a distance longer than pi, this ball. So, so this representing pi, this one pops out at a distance representing 4. But obviously, it isn't. It doesn't demonstrate that <laughs> pi is four, because obviously it demonstrates that pi is three point one four. Because this worked, it did obey pi rules in the circle, and it didn't obey pi rules outside of a circle. I mean, how you know to sit there and say, look, I by straightening a circle uh, in motion, I don't. It doesn't obey the same rules. That something moving at a constant velocity, at a constant vector, behaves differently than something you're bending. I mean, do, do, does anybody really have to say, duh, that obviously something not going straight, <laughs> okay, is going to be under a different stress than something going straight? Uh, and again, the stress is, is that it has to re reduce its, it has to use its own momentum to change its vector of velocity if that's a way I can say it it has to steal some of the energy it has and apply it in the y plane okay to create the new directional vector that's probably enough said probably don't need to harp on it but this is just bullshit to imply there's anything else going on here it's not magic it's not a mystery. It doesn't prove that pi equals 4. It doesn't. <laughs> and so this is just kind of crap. Yes, thank you very much. Till next, I mean, the fact that there's a relationship to how much that speed will be degraded to do a complete circle, and that that's probably been formulized by NASA or somebody, uh, they probably know this. Um, 
is is there probably is some sort of consistent factor as you make the circle bigger and bigger the decline in speed would be relative to the size of the circle so yeah but it'll always come out the same thing proportionally in the sense that the amount of degrade in speed will be proportional to the difference between pi and 4 I mean 3.14 and 4 um, that's what it costs you is the difference between those two numbers is how much it costs to change direction four times technically if you just think of this as a square you could sort of just think that it has to change its direction at least four times maybe five uh, <laughs> but anyway that that you know it's a lot of little direction changes but the point is in the end you're doing these you're doing this perpendicular thing and you can add that up into those whatever your whatever the whatever the differences between pi and 4 which would only be uh, 8 point um, uh, what 7 uh, <laughs> yeah, should, uh, 1 4 so that would be 6 if I had 1 4 that's 8 7 8 uh, 9 yeah I need one more so it would be 8 six anyway it doesn't really matter um, yeah point eight six so divide that by four and then you have an interesting number right so let's divide that by four and that will give us two point two one <laughs> two now five two point one five um, so that might be the more important number might be <laughs> Well, I'm not going to worry about that. Anyway, I I think I've I think I've made a valid enough point that there's no energy creating the conversion in momentum, so the energy must come from the thing moving, and that's where it comes from. It has to slow down because it has to use its own energy to change its direction. Unlike gravity, which is adding energy. Okay. Till next time, such.